A modern army in this era of new strategic concepts, new weapons, and new logistical techniques demands of its many administrative organizations the utmost in efficiency and coordinated responsiveness to tactical and strategic requirements. The administration of the Army's manifold supply systems, as well as many other management activities, calls for the storage and processing of vast amounts of information and active operational data. Many thousands of military and civilian personnel are employed in this work. Conventional electrical accounting machines have been in use for years to assist these personnel. However, management's increased demands on the administrative system have surpassed by far the capability of these machines. To increase the administrative efficiency of the Army and thereby heighten its fighting effectiveness, we now have available a new management tool, the Automatic Data Processing System. With these automatic systems, the tremendous amount of routine clerical work in the Army can be performed with greater speed, accuracy, and coordination than has hitherto been possible. Moreover, this new tool provides the opportunity for developing entirely new and still more efficient administrative concepts. This is the console of an International Business Machine 705 system, one of the various makes used by the U.S. Army. Here is a Remington Rand Univac system in operation at the Franklin Institute in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This is an RCA Bismack system being used by the U.S. Army Ordnance Corps. And here is the Burroughs Datatron system. An ADPS, as it is commonly called, is a complex of electronic circuits which, when integrated with associated devices for input and output, is designed to automatically process and file mass volumes of information and data in accordance with predetermined programs of instructions. The ability of any ADPS to speedily consume large volumes of information enables us to process data in its raw form without intermediate summarization. To bring the raw data to the processing center in timely fashion, we utilize both the domestic and strategic communication circuits of the ACAN, the Army Command and Administrative Network. The communication network serves as the connecting link to give us a worldwide integrated data processing system for all logistical and administrative support functions of the Army. The major problem in developing the full potential of an ADPS lies in the proper definition of the area of application. To obtain proper and maximum utilization of this system, one must understand how it operates. To explain its operation, let us look at an ADPS in block diagram form. Basically, all military automatic data processing systems operate on similar principles. There are six basic functional components. Every military system utilizes communication networks to collect data and disseminate reports. Therefore, communications is a component of the system. Let's just keep that in mind. In the processing system proper, we have input and output devices. An internal control section. A memory section. And an arithmetic and logic section. The control, memory, and arithmetic and logic sections together comprise what is called the central processing unit. The raw data must first be gathered from external sources through the communications system. Raw 
raw data in the form of magnetic tape, punched cards, or paper tape are fed into memory through an input unit. Instructions which tell the machine how to process the data are similarly fed into memory. The data and the instructions are stored in the memory section. An electronic copy of the instructions moves automatically in a prescribed sequence from memory into the control section. The control section, under the direction of these instructions, automatically sends out electronic signals, which cause the data to be processed in the arithmetic and logic section. Here the computations and logical decisions are accomplished. The result of the processing then leaves the memory through an output device. This processed data is then transmitted to the required locations. Let's process a simple problem. Through the input device, we will enter two numbers to be added, 523 and 611. But for the moment, we will consider only four components in the system and disregard the control section and the communications network. Let us follow the machine sequence of operations in accomplishing this simple addition. The first step is to read the number 523 into memory. Then read 611 into memory. Then send 523 to arithmetic and logic. Then add 611 to 523. Then store the result of this addition in memory. Finally, write the result on the output medium. At electronic speed, thousands of these steps are accomplished per second. Now let us go through the same problem in somewhat greater detail. Memory is divided into specific locations. The allocation of these locations is the task of the programmer who develops the sequence of machine instructions. Each location is identified by a number called an address. This address is analogous to a house address, while the storage location is analogous to the house itself. Instead of using complete words for machine operations, as we see here, each system uses its own set of abbreviations. We should also note that by definition, an instruction always includes an operation and an address. Thus, for our present example, the first operation, which is read the first number into memory, will appear as RD. In addition, the complete instruction will include the memory address, which the programmer has designated for the storage of this number. In this case, location 109. To the electronic circuitry, read 109 means read the next number from the input into memory location 109. The next instruction would be read 101. The third instruction would be send 109, which means send the number in memory location 109 to the arithmetic and logic section. The next instruction would be add 101, which means add the number from memory location 101 to the number stored in the arithmetic and logic section. The next instruction would be store 114, which means store the result in memory location 114.
the final instruction would appear as write 114, which takes the sum from memory location 114 and writes it on the output medium. Now let us look at the function of the control section in processing our problem. Before the processing begins, the sequence of instructions must be developed. Through an input device, the instructions are loaded into memory. Note that in this case, the programmer allocated locations 115 through 120 to store the instructions. Memory location 114 is reserved for storage of results. From memory, the instructions move automatically and in sequence into the control section. The control section interprets the instruction and sets up the proper electronic circuits to execute the instruction read 109. The control section now interprets the next instruction, read 101. And continues through all the instructions, send 109. Add 101. Store 114. Write 114. The control section may be compared to a quarterback. It calls the plays, but it calls them in electronic language using the coded abbreviations that the system is keyed to obey. Transfer instructions are used to test for equality by electronically comparing the magnitudes of designated numbers. A similar test is made for inequality. As a result of these comparison tests, the control section can automatically shift about within the sequence of instructions. Examples of transfer instructions used to test for the possible conditions are transfer high for x greater than y. Transfer equal for x equal to y. And transfer low for x less than y. We have just seen how the machine operates internally. Now we will look at a typical installation of a large-scale ADPS to see how it is employed to improve operations. In the United States Army Signal Supply Agency in Philadelphia, an IBM 705 system is utilized to process selected data generated by the agency's mission. Let us examine the characteristics of this particular system. Data and instructions on punched cards can be fed from a card reader directly into the memory of the central processing unit, which in this case is a magnetic core device. or they can be transcribed from the cards onto magnetic tape where they remain stored. Data and instructions on magnetic tape in turn can also be fed into memory. It is usually desirable to have permanent files of data on magnetic tape because from this medium data can be fed into the ADPS at a speed of 15,000 characters per second. Magnetic tape has the added advantage of affording storage for large quantities of data in a small space. The data on 25,000 punch cards 
can be recorded and stored on one 2400 foot reel of magnetic tape. The memory section of the central processing unit consists of a grid structure of electromagnetic cores with a capacity of 20,000 characters and an associated electromagnetic drum which has a capacity of 60,000 characters. Both capacities can be expanded. All data to be processed must be fed into memory first. Then processed in the electronic circuits of the arithmetic and logic section. And the results return to memory where they are temporarily stored. From memory, the results are extracted to the various output media, punched cards, magnetic tape, or printed forms. Processed data intended for file storage is generally recorded on magnetic tape. Data intended for electrical transmission to distant depots or other points is punched on cards and sent out over the transceiver network. Output in typewritten form can be printed on ruled paper or on forms made up for specific purposes such as shipping orders. The operator's console is primarily a monitoring device. Once the instructions have been fed into the central processing unit, the processing routines proceed automatically. The principal function of the console is to display visually what is going on in the system and to allow manual intervention if necessary. The first step in any application of an ADPS is to define the problem. Problem definition determines the purpose and scope of the application. It takes the form of coordinated narrative and flow charts plus exhibits of input and output media. These charts represent the most detailed analysis possible of every factor and condition in the problem. When the definers finish their narrative and flow charts, the programmers take over. Their job is to convert the definition into a program of instructions for the automatic processing system. These instructions are represented by coded abbreviations and numbers which tell each component of the system what to do. A problem usually requires many steps which are organized as sequences of instructions. The integration of the many sequences into a completed program requires considerable attention to documentation and detailed coordination. The imagination and ingenuity of the programmer play a very important part in the efficient operation of the ADPS. To develop the best routines for the system to follow requires, on the part of the programming staff, a thorough comprehension of the capabilities of the system and a clear conception of the purpose of the program to which the system is being applied. Creating a program takes many man hours of brain work, but once a program is established, it becomes the processing system for all transactions coming within its scope. Minor modification of this program may be necessary on a continuous basis to conform to changes in policy. The initial application of the ADPS at the U.S. Army Signal Supply Agency provided a continuous availability edit and inventory review of 162,000 active items with a dollar value of $1,200,000,000. Through the availability edit, the agency determines the ability of signal depots to fill certain classes of requisitions and shortage reports sent to the signal supply agency. The day-to-day -day impact of inventory balance changes and requirement changes is evaluated by the automatic data processing system 
and constitutes the basis for periodic inventory reviews. Let us see how the ADPS at the United States Army Signal Supply Agency is applied to a typical transaction that falls within the programmed scope of the Availability Edit and Inventory Review. Our typical example is triggered by a shortage report coming in over the transceiver network from, let us say, the signal supply depot at Sacramento. The type of transaction we are following will be processed along with the many other types of transactions which this particular program of instructions is designed to handle. The data on the punched cards are transcribed onto a length of magnetic tape from which the data will be fed into the central processing unit. The program of instructions to process this type of data is similarly fed in. The operator pays particular attention to this setup phase to ensure that the processing will be executed as programmed. Appropriate instructions are automatically called into memory as needed by each successive stage of processing. The central processing unit, abbreviated CPU, following these instructions, interrogates the pertinent data in the tape files by means of comparisons in order to discover the best availability of the item elsewhere in the supply system. The interrogation discloses that the depot at Decatur has adequate supplies to fill the requisition that Sacramento could not fill. Simultaneously, an advice of availability card is produced and sent by transceiver from Philadelphia to Sacramento. While the consumer's need is being satisfied, a chain reaction within the supply system begins. The shipment of the item from Decatur reduces the stock at that depot. Decatur informs Philadelphia of a balance change in this item. This information is incorporated in the electronic files through the automatic system. While the system is updating the files on this item, it recognizes by mathematical calculations and comparisons that were made that a stock position study should be initiated. Thereupon, the necessary instructions to accomplish the stock position study are automatically fed into the CPU. If the study reveals that the stock of the item has fallen below a certain level, the CPU will put out a recommendation for replenishment. The operator will later remove these recommendations from the printer and forward them to the stock management office for decision. Thus we see that Sacramento's shortage report triggered actions and reactions which brought about a correct stock position in this item. At the same time, all file data on this material was automatically updated. In like manner, the files on 162,000 supply items are kept updated on a day-to-day -day basis, thereby facilitating the processing of any transaction that might arise. In the first application of the ADPS at the Army Signal Supply Agency in Philadelphia, an availability edit and inventory review program was designed which stores 8 million automatically accessible facts on 162,000 supply items. An average of 37,000 changes to these facts are automatically made every day within 24 hours after the changes occur, regardless of where in the supply system they occur. An average of 6,000 requisitions are processed each day, and automatic decisions are made which keep transportation costs and shipping time down to a minimum. Moreover, the instructions in the program call for the system to remember all orders which cannot be shipped owing to non-availability of stocks or substitutes. As soon as such stocks are received, the due-out orders are automatically processed for shipment. 
The ADPS application at the U.S. Army Signal Supply Agency is demonstrative of similar applications to other Army Technical Service national stock control points. For instance, the Ordnance Corps has installed the RCA Bismack for administration of supply operations of the Ordnance Tank Automotive Command in Detroit, Michigan. And the Quartermaster Corps has installed two IBM 650s at the Quartermaster Data Processing Center, Richmond, Virginia. An IBM 650 has also been installed by the Engineer Corps at the Engineer Supply Control Office, St. Louis, Missouri. Thus, we have made great strides toward increasing the responsiveness of the CONUS portion of the Army logistics system. However, recognizing the stateside activity as only a portion of the overall task of getting supplies to the consumer, the logistic planners of the Army have been engaged in devising tactical logistic concepts. The emphasis on high mobility of the tactical striking forces of our future Army has pointed up the need for a truly modern Army supply system. One concept of a modern army supply system is presently under test on a large scale. This concept is called Project Mass, which emphasizes the system approach toward increasing responsiveness. The three basic elements of mass include selected stockage, high-speed communications, and expedited transportation. The mass system, as depicted, includes a concept of integrated data processing communications to streamline the information flow from consumer to supplier. The data processing machine to operate in this and similar advanced concepts will be a mobile computer, the forerunner of which is the DICIAC, presently performing a data processing task at the White Sands Proving Ground, New Mexico. Much of the ruggedization and packaging experience obtained in developing the DICIAC are directly applicable to the development of MobyDIC, the mobile computer designed for the data processing requirements of the tactical elements of the Army. In addition to the work currently being done to provide ADPS for logistical and other administrative functions within CONUS, the tactical implications are being studied to produce an integrated system for the Army in the field. At present, the following areas can be improved by the use of ADPS. All types of administrative functions. Collection, analysis, dissemination and display of combat intelligence. Weapons use. and analysis. Engineering problems such as storage and display of information on obstacles. Stream flow and flood predictions. Meteorology. Tactical air request system. Area damage control. Computations of requirements for airborne and amphibious operations. Control of tactical movements. In addition, transportable types of ADPS equipment are being developed for use in the field for the integrated field army system, such as this data input device, which when linked to communications equipment, could provide short range data transmission of such information as initial landing reports and subsequent reconnaissance reports. And this transverter, which automatically transmitted station identification and the information coded on a data card. Is this video viewer, which is capable of presenting graphic information. Narrative reports. Alphanumeric information in matrix form. 
and televised views of the combat area. Tactical ADPS equipment will assist field commanders and staff officers in performing their functions, such as determining the availability of an inviting enemy target. It is felt that tactical ADPS equipment will help to decrease the requirement for administrative personnel on the battlefield and furnish timely and reliable information so that the tempo of combat can be increased. In seeking techniques for obtaining maximum combat effectiveness of our highly mobile forces of the future, the military planners have turned to integrated automatic data processing systems. The adaptability and versatility of ADPS is evident today from the present applications to supply and personnel accounting operations. These same qualities of ADPS will increase the responsiveness of weapon systems and dispersed fighting elements to the voice of command. <laughs>